We just had, in my opinion, one of the more eventful earnings calls in a long time because this was packed with some interesting stuff, a lot of which disproved a lot of my theories and speculation. I was wrong. I'm happy to report that. But for one, the Cybertruck finally got updated on the current installed capacity chart, which has been stuck in the in-development phase at Giga Texas for so long. For quarters and quarters and quarters, we were all waiting for it to finally change to under construction, but that doesn't really make sense because... Giga Texas is already built, which means the floor space for the Cybertruck assembly line is already done being constructed, which is why it's now updated showing they're in the tooling stage, which means manufacturing equipment, welding robots, and of course the 9,000 ton Giga Press, which has been imported into Texas and should arrive at Giga Texas any day now. All of that stuff has begun, which at this point, in my opinion, means that the design has to be pretty much close to finalized, or if there are little changes they're making, it's very, very small, but just as a reminder, it took a while before the Model Y at Giga Texas was able to go from under construction on the installed annual capacity chart until production had begun like a year later. So right now, Tesla is saying they expect Cybertruck production to begin in mid-2023. I'm applying a little bit of Elon time on that and just going to assume that similarly, just like it took the Model Y about a year to go from, you know, the under construction phase to the production phase, now that we're seeing the Cybertruck in the tooling stage, Stage, it will probably stay that way until I think Q4 of next year. So certain things like mass production of Tesla armored glass or mass production of the exoskeleton may end up taking a little bit longer than they originally thought, but we will probably have prototype Cybertrucks driving around the factory and being tested by mid-2023, and around August or September of next year is likely when you would see it be tested by the EPA, have some range testing done so we know what the miles per gallon equivalent of the Cybertruck is. And I'm personally predicting, I could be wrong on this, I've been wrong a lot, I think they're going to start Cybertruck deliveries to employees first in the fourth quarter of next year, and then customer deliveries will probably be in the first quarter of 2024. So the fact that it's in the tooling stage makes it feel a lot more real. It feels like we keep getting Cybertruck delay after delay, and oh, we'll work on that later, eventually we'll get around to that. But that's not the only big update on the installed annual capacity chart. For two, the Tesla Semi is now in the production production state. So yes, Elon actually ended up being right for once on Twitter, and they confirmed that it's being built at Giga Nevada. So not Fremont, not Giga Texas. This is the first vehicle, actually, Giga Nevada has ever built before they were just building batteries. And the real interesting part that threw a curveball for me was that Elon confirmed the Tesla Semi is not using 4680 cells. I assume that means it's using 2170 cells because that's the more energy-dense form factor, and that's primarily the type of cell they build at Giga Nevada, so for production efficiency, it makes the most amount of sense to use the cells that are already there, but in previous earnings calls, like last year, Elon had mentioned that they need the 4680s in order for the Tesla Semi to come to production, and the fact now that during today's earnings call, they doubled down on the idea that, nope, the Tesla Semi will have 500 miles of range with a full payload, and it won't have 4680 cells, and it will not compromise on the payload capacity. That's by far the biggest criticism of electric semi trucks. Anytime you talk about them, people say, yeah, yeah, but the batteries are too heavy and the semi truck can only weigh so much so that means the payload of the truck is ultimately going to be limited whereas in today's live stream they were like yeah no it's going to have the same payload capacity as a diesel semi truck and with the mega chargers they've installed at the Frito Lay facility and at Giga Nevada it should be able to charge up to 70% within 30 minutes that implies around a 1.5 megawatt charge speed so of course the big question is why are they not going with the 4680 cells especially based on today's new they mentioned that in Q3 they built three times as many 4680 batteries as they did in Q2. Maybe three times zero is still zero, but no, that's not it. But everyone started asking themselves like, okay, well, if Tesla basically stopped selling the standard range all-wheel drive Model Y, right? Like a few months ago, we saw some people getting the option to have accelerated delivery with their Model Y and you would get a lower range model with 4680 batteries, but there haven't been any reported deliveries of those lately. Like no one has said, oh yeah, I got the standard range all-wheel drive Model Y made from Texas. No, as far as we could tell, Giga Texas is only building long-range dual motor Model Ys. But on this call, when they were asked, like, so where are the 4680 batteries going if you're building more and more of these things? And they said, yeah, some of the Model Ys at Giga Texas still have 4680s in them. So I'm trying to interpret all of this information. Like, are they building standard range all-wheel drive Model Ys and not putting that on the configurator or not offering accelerated delivery? Like, are they just offering it to employees? 
these and keeping it like as the internal stockpile or have they found a way to match the range of the 2170 model y so now you could be getting a long range model y from texas and it might have 4680 cells or it might be 2170 cells but both are dual motor both are 330 miles of range you can't tell the difference the charging speed is the same you charge both of them to 80 percent for daily usage so i am honestly really confused as to where all these 4680 cells are going of course a lot of people are speculating that they're stockpiling 4680 cells so that they have a large pool to pull from once cybertruck production begins but in that case why would they say that a lot of the model y's coming out of texas still have 4680s so this makes me even more lost than we were before but i'm just very happy that tooling has finally begun for the cybertruck and honestly very impressed by the 2170 cells the fact that they found a way to make the older form factor work in the semi and it still will have 500 miles of range it'll still have a really fast charging speed and it won't compromise on the payload capacity plus they're in production now with deliveries slated to begin in less than eight weeks this is just like freaking impressive honestly like the more i hear about 4680s the less impressive they are and it makes me realize like 2170 cells they're they're kind of underrated as far as like energy dense batteries which is what you need on the semi right batteries with high watt hours per kilogram because you don't want to compromise on the payload the fact that they were able to get that working in the semi is awesome like well done tesla for making older batteries work but also are these 4680 cells like really worth it like three times more than last quarter how many cells is that really is it like 20 percent of the model y's coming out of giga texas is it 50 percent we don't really know it seems like a lot of people that went to the tesla annual shareholder meeting noticed that there weren't 4680 model y's being built anymore and in previous shareholder decks tesla had said they had shifted to building 2170 model y's with non-structural battery packs now i don't really know what to believe anymore i mean anyone out there who has taken delivery of a giga texas model y in the past couple weeks please check your owner's manual and see if it says you have a structural battery pack that would probably be the only way to know for sure if you had 4680s or not but if that was wasn't enough crazy information surrounding the Tesla semi. They also said that it's their current plan to ramp the semi truck to 50,000 units a year by the end of 2024, which is like insanely high volume. If you consider each one of those trucks is probably going to have like a one megawatt hour battery pack. If they're selling those for like 200 something thousand dollars, that's many billions worth of revenue for Tesla. So I thought Giga Nevada was just going to be like a basic pilot line for semi production, but the way they talked about it during the earnings call, it sounds like they want to get Giga Nevada building Tesla semis at pretty high volume. Either that or they just forgot to mention that they want real Tesla semi production to be done at Texas. But right now they've not mentioned in any recent history that they want to move Tesla semi production to Texas because Texas is kind of tapped out already. I mean, Model Y production is taking up like 70% of the floor space and then Cybertruck is going to take up the rest. So I don't really know where they would build the semi if they did build it at Giga Texas. There's a new building, but that's just for cathode refinery. So I don't know, maybe they have plans I don't know about, but the fact that Tesla semi production is starting and yes, it'll be low volume, but they want it to get to 50,000 units within just a couple years. That's insanely ambitious and they may have a hard time hitting that, but I'm still impressed nonetheless. And also like, man, there's a lot of 2170 cells to go around. If they can spare this many cells for the semi truck and ramp Model Y simultaneously, that also explains a lot as to why they've shut off orders for the long range model 3 because they need those cells to go into the model y long range which is ramping really quickly and the tesla semi well done tesla for getting all of that to work so are there any other exciting updates or announcements from this earnings call that highlighted your guys's attention all that stuff let me know in the comments below and thank you to everyone on patreon for supporting this channel directly seriously helps us out a ton as does just watching these videos so thanks again and have an excellent rest of your day